Hi, in this video, I'm going to talk about what is generalized logit model and when we use generalized logit model. All right, I'm going to take an example to demonstrate uh, the use of generalized logit model. So here is this data set, data school, and it has got, uh, you know, three variables, okay, one dependent, two independent variables. The dependent variable there for us is uh, style of teaching of mathematics. There are three different categories, three different style of teaching. One is self uh, learning the second one is uh, learning in team and the third one is classroom teaching and the idea or the intention here is to see um what are the factors responsible for uh, a given student or, or a set of students in a school liking a particular style of teaching okay um so we have got two independent variables school and program so we would like to know you know if there are two schools and there are two programs okay uh, uh, well, there are two schools, yes, and well, three schools, sorry, one, two, three, three schools, and two programs, regular and afternoon programs. Okay, so we'd like to know that uh, how they're related, right? The style of teaching and the students in, in a given school and the uh, the program. I mean, there are two programs, regular and afternoon program in a school, and how. You know the independent variables program and school are related to uh, the dependent variable style of teaching okay so that's what the researcher is trying to see we're going to use uh, generalized logic model in this why is so so remember the logistic regression is used when we have a categorical uh, dependent variable and the uh, normal logistic regression we use um the you know the plain vanilla or the, you know, the probably the simplest form of logistic regression when we have just two vari two values right the dependent variable has just two values okay um but here we have got three values and the values cannot be ordered so they are it's a nominal categorical variable okay not an ordered categorical variable so if they if they were ordered they, they we can order them then we need to use the ordered logistic regression but here, the style of teaching cannot be ordered, right? Uh, it's not like we can say, okay, this is better than the other one. So there is no way we can order them in ascending or in descending order. So these are nominal values which are uh, equally important and equally weighted. So we cannot simply uh, consider them as bigger, one value uh, as bigger than the other. So the nominal values. In such cases where we have nominal values in the dependent variable, nominal categorical variable, by the way, we need to use generalized logic uh, model. Okay, the syntax in SAS is simple. We use the prop logistic regression uh, syntax, um, except that we in the link function that we use is glogit. Okay, so the link function is important, and when you use glogit, it actually uh, means that we are using generalized logit model. Other than that, uh, we need to use the class statement here because both school and program are categorical in nature, and we want to see uh, how uh, you know students from different programs in different schools like the style of teaching, the different style of teaching. So that's why we want separate regression equations for. Uh, each school and each program one of them will be used as a reference that's why the reference is first that means the first values in this section will be as used as a reference there are three schools so we'll have uh, equations for two schools in the results and there are two programs so we'll have equations only for one program because one of them uh, will be used as a reference right so we have the n categories we'll have n minus one results right because one of them will be as a used as a reference and the model statement we have style which is the dependent variable and then school program as independent variable we're also taking an interaction term school and program we are trying to multiply them because you know just to see you know there is some sort of interaction between them uh, and we'll see if that comes out to be uh, significant or not and then uh, well we'll run this uh, regression equation to see how the result looks like <coughs> right so now we have the result uh, the first thing to see in the result is whether is converse well 
the convergence criteria is satisfied that means uh, it, the model has converged so it's good otherwise you cannot uh, go ahead in interpreting the results you cannot explain the results so if that's the first thing to see in the result and then we'll see the test of global null hypothesis okay uh, the p values should be less than 0.05 for all three likelihood ratio test score test and vault test if that's not the case uh, we also cannot go ahead in interpreting the results so we have to stop there uh, but fortunately for us all three are significant um, what it basically means is that uh, the independent variables are indeed contributing towards explaining the variation in the dependent variable and that's important right otherwise no point in building model uh, here is the analysis of maximum likelihood estimate. So we have the alpha and beta, slope and uh, intercept. We have got two intercepts because there are three. The maximum number of categories in the class variable is in school, which is three. We have got um, since there is three, we'll have n minus one equations, right? So three minus one is two. So we'll have two intercepts, and for each uh, you know uh, independent variable, we'll have two. Uh, values right and if there is a subcategory then we'll have another um, respectively for that subcategory we'll have two more uh, beta uh, values as well or estimates as well all right so we've got two intercepts and for school one we have uh, equations for self as well as for team okay so self and team will have equations and then the third one is just a reference right so uh, we can write it down we can write the equations like we have three categories so we have two equations uh, and the third one of course is just a reference so it's self-explanatory uh, we can uh, you know once we have the two equations we don't need to know the third one because automatically we will be able to interpret the results for the third one the interaction terms comes out to be insignificant as you can see the p values are well above 0.05 so they're uh, non-significant so insignificant we simply uh, need to remove them from the equations and re-estimate the regression equation uh, in proc logistic when you are doing uh, generalized logic you do not get c statistics concordance and so on so you need to separately by yourself writing code uh, compute these values um, just to see you know what's the efficiency of the model uh, you can also uh, you know you can also uh see the accuracy and using a conf confusion matrix and that's what is recommended but here we're not going to do it because we just have 18 observations and with such a small sample uh it's not possible but if you have large enough sample then i highly recommend you to uh, build your model in training data and then test it in test data and uh, have a confusion matrix compute the accuracy test just to see whether the model is uh, is okay or not, uh, or the accuracy is good enough or not. Okay, so we'll remove this uh, interaction term and re-estimate, uh, and then we'll um, see how the results change. Well, the result will slightly change because there is some level of correlation between these terms. So if you add extra terms, the beta parameters tend to change a bit. So if something is insignificant, just remove them and re-estimate. Okay, and now after re-estimating, we'll have different set of results. Yeah, so different sets of results. Not all of them are significant. Some of them are insignificant. You see the p-values uh, for uh, school one for team and for school till self both are insignificant. So you know you simply cannot uh, you know interpret them. But otherwise. Other variables are more or less significant. Well, this was also insignificant. So, um, yeah. So wherever we have significance, we see that it does contribute uh, towards uh, choosing a particular style of teaching. Like, okay. And so that's the way you actually understand the psychology of students. Like, uh, uh, why a particular, uh, why a group of students choose a particular style of teaching. Okay. Uh, depending on which school he comes from or which program he comes from or the student comes from. So <clears throat> that's the way you build uh, a, a generalized logistic model, logistic regression model and uh, you use uh, these models when you have 
nominal categorical dependent variable and uh, you have nominal categorical dependent variable when you have the, the values of a dependent variable cannot be ordered okay